Hello everybody, good day to you and welcome back to the second episode of this 2004 F-150. If you missed the last episode of this F-150, have no fear, because if you go down to this video's description, there will be a link that will take you back in time to part one. We just finished replacing both of the front, upper, and lower control arms due to excessive ball joint wear. We're now headed over to the alignment rack to finish the job. Okay, back on the ground, starting the engine. To the alignment rack we go. Backing out the auto. This thing's still rattly with all those front end parts loose. Watch this. Click it clack. We'll get it straightened right out though. No problem. Okay, we're up, parking this for now. <laughs> Weebly wobbling. Yeah, we'll be all right. I still gotta tighten everything down. The whole front end's still loose. Yeah, all the the control arms are all loose because you gotta put these particular control arms on the ground before you tighten them, or it'll twist the bushings up and then tear them, and that would be bad. Yeah, now you know. Now you know. I'm talking to Pete. Thunderbolts of lightning. Very, very frightening. On the locks. Okay, the truck's up on the rack. First things first, let's go ahead and tighten down the upper control arms because there will be no adjustment made with these uppers. Now the lowers on the other hand, I think they do have some slots and uh, are somewhat adjustable. So uh, we're gonna have to wait to fully secure those when the alignment measurements are made. I'm, I'm trying to cheat here if you didn't notice. I don't want to reach a wrench in behind here and try to get the front of uh, front of this bolt. So I'm trying to do it the uh, right here. Yeah, that'll work. Kind of a tight squeeze, but I can pull it off. These are in position. Uh, getting tight. One down, three to go. That's the rear one right there. I've got that brought up to torque and I think one final pull should finish that one off. Ugh, maybe, maybe one more. There we go, clickage. All right, two more on the other side. I'll be right back when I'm done with that. I have the other side tight. Let's get out of here, go down below, and tighten up some of the lower components. Okay, we need to get these lower strut bolts, the big one here, and likewise on that side. So I'm just gonna reach in and hit these with an impact. If the nut turns, I'll grab it with the pliers. If it doesn't turn, then uh, no grabbing. Loud noises. No grabbing necessary. And uh, the other side. Got a switch here. Click. Okay, now these lowers were my concern because you see how these are slotted? The whole wheel is gonna be cambered in because of that. And probably likewise on this side too. Yeah, so I'm gonna need to, uh, to pry bar these guys into position and then uh, tighten them down and then go ahead and take the wheel alignment measurements. Okay, so what I plan to do is to line up this bolt with the old marks that are on the, uh, on the frame here. If it proves to be accurate, then no adjustment needed, and if it's not, then I can adjust them later. Take her loose. I've got a pry bar on the other side of the big bolt against the, uh, against the frame. Is that going to be enough? No, that's not enough leverage. All right. Hmm. Well, what is? A longer pry bar. Actually, you know what? Before I potentially hurt myself with a pry bar, 
I'm just gonna hook a ratchet strap and run it all the way over to the other side of the frame and just ratchet strap this in until it lines up. That's my new plan on my always involving non-plan plan. Is it gonna work? Yeah, it is. If it doesn't work fully, it'll work partially. Give it some ratcheting clicks. See what happens here. Much better than uh, a pry bar. Oh yeah. That's the money spot right there. That's what I want. Loud noises. Get injecting now. I can do the left side while I'm at it. But that's also hooked up to the control arm. Brilliant, says I. Brilliant. Let's knock this thing loose. So that was highly effective. I'm gonna repeat the same procedure uh, for the rear, rear bolts. I'll leave the strap hooked to the front of the left front over there, and I'll hook it up to the rear of this one so it pulls this way. That's what we want. And we'll try that again. I don't know how often people use ratchet straps to do wheel alignments anymore. I used to do this stuff like all the time. The old Camaros and the Firebirds especially, you had to do this. They had a tool to adjust them with, but nobody ever bought it. Well, I mean, maybe, I'm sure somebody did. I think the dealerships had it, but I didn't have it. That's not gonna work. Nope, try again, Ray. All right, that's not really working out, so I'm gonna put a jack under it and lift the front up. Lose some of the weight. Well, the ratchet straps are oh, having an easier time. I know what you're saying, but wait, it's at an angle. It is at an angle. What I'm gonna do is let it down, put the strap back on to help keep the control arms pulled towards each other, and then I'll loosen them again and then tighten them again. He's under here. Uh, 
everything stayed where it's supposed to stay, except for that flashlight right there, both of them. So what I'm gonna do, tighten the strap again. That's gonna secure those control arms in their current position. I'll take the moose and then I'll re-tighten them. Loud noise. And one on the other side, repeating loud noises. Yes, the ears were protected. Okay. All right, we don't need this. Let's go ahead and put the heads on and uh, measure everything out. I'm gonna fast forward through all that. Um, if you do wanna see the actual head setup procedure, I'll put a link down in this video's description. It will take you to another video on a, I think it was a forward expedition uh, where I ended up doing a wheel alignment and you can watch the procedure from that video. Okay, looking at our preliminary measurements, we're pretty good. Uh, we do need to make some adjustments and uh, I'm gonna call it over here on the right side. Uh, our spec is negative 0.2 for camber on both sides and our spec is 4.6 on caster for both sides. Now we see here we're at 5.1 and positive 0.2. So that's, that's actually pretty good. That's very close to spec. It's closer to spec than this 0.9. So I'd rather have more positive camber and more positive caster on the right front wheel to match the left front wheel than it to lower these down and have a higher negative camber number. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust the uh, right front lower control arm to bring this negative 0.9 up to get closer to this positive 0.2 and I'm gonna do it in a way that also brings caster up ever so slightly. This is our wheel. We want to bring it, and it's got a lean to it, we want to bring it from a negative lean to a positive lean. Doo -doo -doo. For example, right here, it's leaning negative 0.9 degrees. We want it to lean positive 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 degrees. And then our caster, we want to swing that forward a little bit. Ruben phone! Swing that forward a little bit to get more positive caster just so we match the other side. If the split is different on either one of the measurements, it'll cause a pull or uneven tire wear. And we don't want that. So in order to achieve positive camber out of the right front wheel, we need to bring the lower control arm in towards the center line. Uh, however, it's in pretty far. I mean, there's a little bit of adjustment left, but that's actually in pretty far. So um, it would be this front measurement that, or this front adjustment that we're gonna use. Because if we do that, it's going to swing the pivot point of the ball joint forward thus creating more of an angle for positive caster on that wheel. And that's what we're looking for. So uh, da, 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 I think I'm gonna go ahead and bust out the, uh, the ratchet strap again, hook this guy back up, get some tension on it, and then loosen this and hopefully I can pull this control arm in a little bit farther. If this turns out to be ineffective, I'll have to go over to the driver's side front, that wheel over there, and uh, loosen the bolt and give it more negative camber, which I really don't wanna do but it's most important that both of the sides match more than anything. Okay, let's take this guy loose a little bit, loud noises. There's actually quite a bit of space there I can play with, I think. Oh, some final click on that. Let's pry bar this bad boy out some, see if it's gonna move. Yep. And I'm looking over at my measurements. I got negative 0.7 degrees camber. <sighs> Couple more clicks on this ratchet strap. I think I got, I think I have at least like one more left in me. All right, a little bit more much as I can get out of it. That's where I'm going here. All right, that's it. That's all 
all I got. Lock it down. Stop noises. Again. Gust. I achieved, uh, what does it say, point negative six degrees. Let's let up the uh, tension on the strap here and see where it settles. Yeah, point six. Okay, yeah, we're gonna go to the driver's side and let that one go negative slightly because they have to match more than anything. The, uh, the advantage on this side is we need to go that way to get some negative lean on the tire. So all we've got to do is let that out a little bit. And I'll do that by just putting the strap onto it, putting a little bit of tension on that strap so it can't fly out too far. And I'll just take the bolt loose and then tighten it back up. All truck gravity. He's clever, says I. Right now our measurement over here is positive 0.3 and we want to make it negative 0.6 to match the other side. Loud noises. Oh, that was way too far. See how far that thing flew out? I went way, way, way too far. I didn't have enough support. Fail. It's alright. Got a good system worked out here. That's it, right there. So it went right back to where it was. Hello. Goodbye. See you later, man. And that guy got here after me too. Let's try this. Uh, maybe one more. We'll let up one more notch. There, it moved. Okay, I'm gonna head up top and uh, initiate the caster measurement again so we can verify our caster adjustments and we'll go from there. ended up with positive 0.1 on that side and caster fell down to 4.7. We seem to have flipped because now we're 5.1 here, but we're still negative on the right front camber. So we need to bring the rear adjustment slot in for more positive. That'll give us positive and it'll also give us negative caster. It's just gonna pull the wheel back again towards the, the rear of the car. So we have to do one more adjustment on the passenger side rear adjuster. Go ahead and lift this thing back up. Moving on up. When I take that bolt loose, I'm just gonna bring that one all the way in towards the center line. Maximum adjustment possible. That's what we're gonna need. There we go. Right, I have my strap ready. Oh, loud noises again. Quite a bit of movement there. I think that's uh, I think that's gonna put us right on the money. Caster is not a live measurement, so every time I make an adjustment, it has to be rechecked with this procedure. It's done by sweeping the wheel to the left, then back to the right, then to the center, and the measurement is complete. Okay, final screen: 4.6, 4.5. 0.2 and negative 0.3. There's a 0.4 degree split, 0.5 degree split. This is acceptable. I'm gonna set up the toe and then we are done so. Real quick reminder, your toe is your left and right. That's the one that changes when you primarily turn your steering wheel. Uh, the left front wheel right here is towed in, 0.49 degrees. That's towards the center line. 
and the right front is out 0.99 degrees and that's away from the center line because it is a negative number. So what I'm gonna do is adjust this tie rod. I'm gonna turn it counterclockwise. That's gonna lengthen the total overall length of it, extending it, and then pushing the wheel outwards away from the center line. And then I'll do the right front to match. Point three zero. Point two zero. And we're coming up on positive point zero two. I'm good with that. Let's lock this one down. Still at 0 0.03 positive and uh, tie rod click. All right, a little bit more positive out of this one, and we're good to go. Five. I'll take that. Lock this one down too. Click. All right, all that's left to do is a confirmation test drive, but quick review. We've got the upper bolts tightened, ball joint tight, ball joint, lower bolts, tie rods, sway bars. Same thing on this side. We got lower, upper balls, control arms, tie rod, control arms. Yes, yes, yes. Everybody's tight. We're good to go. We're secure. Let's get this off the rack and hit the road. Starting the engine. Backing up. There we go. I still hear those brakes squeaking though. Hmm. All right guys, looks like we're good to go here. I'm gonna go do my test drive circle one time and try to burnish these brakes in a little bit harder. That way they quit squealing for this guy. And uh, I'm headed back, drop it off, I'm done going home. So as always, like, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, you know the drill. Let me know about that by tapping tap that like button down below. See bell, thank you alarm. If you did not enjoy this video, um, I can't help you. There's nothing else I can do about it. So uh, again, as always, thank you for watching. And most importantly, don't forget to have yourself a great day. See you guys later.